All right, hi everyone. Uh, welcome, officially welcome to the National Catholic College Admission Association and Jesuit Education Tour Virtual College Fair. That is quite a name. Uh, we're so excited to have you participating in this event with us today. We have some fantastic schools here with us. My name is Stephanie and I will be your facilitator. Before we get started, I have just a couple um, housekeeping items for you. Just as a reminder, your camera and microphone are off, so our panelists cannot see or hear you. You can, however, though, use the Q&A button on your screen to type questions to our presenters at any time during this session. This is just one of many different sessions happening, so please be sure to check out the website and sign up for anything else that you are interested in. The presentation will be recorded and will be available at strivescan.com slash NCCAA. And I would now like to turn it over to our presenters. Well, thank you so much, Stephanie. I'm gonna go ahead and share my screen. And what we would like to do tonight for y'all is to be able to, are you all seeing the correct screen? I feel like I, like we haven't been on Zoom for a hundred years, right? <laughs> is we wanna give you a little preview of our own institution so you understand where we're coming from and then certainly give you some good tips and tricks about what it's like to be an undecided major at a Catholic college and how that can be a great um, help to you as you try and decide which one of these amazing majors you want to start with. So we're gonna start, we're going alphabetically tonight. So enough from me, we're gonna pass it over to Ryan from Iona. We uh, just forward the slide real quick. Yeah. And we are, whoa, there we go, beautiful slide. Well, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, my name is Ryan DePew. I am the Senior Director of Admissions here at Iona College. And today, really happy to be talking to an undecided audience because you are my favorite audience, because most students are still refining, uh, refining their mind or changing their mind about what they actually like to study when they get to college. But to tell you a little bit about us here at Iona College. Iona College, we're in the Northeast. We're located 20 miles outside of New York City in the beautiful city of New Rochelle, New York. I'm four stops out of Midtown Manhattan. On a good day, you can get down to Manhattan in 20 minutes. On a bad day, well, bring a bag, lunch, and a bottle of water. Um, we are a smaller sized institution. We're on smaller end of the mid-size, depending on your perspective. But we are about 300 undergraduates, 4,000 total students if you count my graduate students here on campus. Our average class size is 14 to one. Iona College is comprised of three different and distinct institutions or schools. Uh, we have the School of Arts and Sciences. We have the Penta School of Business, an AACSB accredited institution. And we also have the New York Presbyterian School of Health Sciences. So we have three distinct schools for students to study on here at the institution. And we have some great hands-on experience for allied healthcare programs. Um, and that's through our relationship with New York Presbyterian. So one of the things that's happened in the past year or so here at Iona College as we develop some new relationships. One of those relationships is with New York Presbyterian. And if you're unfamiliar with NYP, it's the New York, the best healthcare provider in New York State and number seven in the nation as per US News and World Report. We have some wonderful support programs for all students here on campus and support is not just in the classroom. It's also outside of classroom, social, emotional, uh, when you're feeling challenged by your coursework. We have some wonderful support programs here with some great statistics as far as success. We've been uh, rated the top 20 most innovative programs in the nation or in the Northeast region, excuse me. Just to tell you a little bit about our, our co-curricular opportunities here on campus, we have 21 NCAA Division I programs on campus. Um, we're probably most famously known for our basketball program, men's basketball. Uh, Rick Pitino is our coach. We're looking forward to going back to the tournament again this year, uh, but NCAA basketball will be what we're most known for, even though cross country track is what we do usually win the most with. 100% um, of our students receive financial aid and assistance here at the college. Um, as a Catholic institution, we value trying to make our education as accessible as possible for our students. And ultimately when it comes to the application, what requirements we do need. Firstly, we are a common app exclusive institution. Uh, so students can complete uh, their application to the school via the Common App. We do require two letters of recommendation and an essay from the student. Um, we do not require test scores, so we are a test optional institution. Um, so that's a very brief synopsis of Iona College and looking forward to meeting you all in just a few more minutes again. All right, hi guys, my name is Amanda Connell. I'm the rep from Manor College. So we're located in Jenkintown, Pennsylvania, which is um, suburban Philadelphia. It's the suburban area right outside of Philadelphia. We're about 10 minutes away from where I live in Northeast Philadelphia and 30 minutes away from um, downtown Philadelphia. 
If you're familiar with the TV show, The Goldbergs, you know exactly where Jenkintown, Pennsylvania is. We are a smaller school with about 750 undergraduate students. 65% of our students are actually first generation students, which we definitely pride ourselves on. And we have 42 different countries that are represented within our student body. We have a really small class size of about 12 students to one professor, as well as a 90% acceptance rate. We also have hands-on experience for all our allied health programs. As you can see from the picture from our dental health clinic, our students can actually come on campus and get their teeth cleaned for about $20. You can also see from our vet tech program, we actually have a horse barn on campus where we have about three horses we care for, as well as some other horses from the area. We also have free tutoring and we actually were voted the second safest college in college campus in the United States of America. And we are the best priced private residential college in PA. 94% of our students receive financial aid and we award around $60,000 or $600,000 in scholarships each year. We do not require test scores or an essay for our application. You can find us on the Common App for free or you can apply at manor.edu for free as well. And I'll turn it over to the next school. Hi all, I'm Abby from St. Martin's University. I'm the Associate Director of Admissions here. St. Martin's is located in Lacey, Washington. So we're way over here on the West Coast um, with Lacey. If you've never heard of it, it's a small town, but we're only five miles from the Washington State Capitol building of Olympia. So super close. It's nice because we've got those opportunities for students to intern with the Capitol and everything like that. So we have lots of opportunities just in our local area. We sit on 380 acres as well so it doesn't take longer than 10 minutes to walk from the farthest building to the farthest building but students have the opportunity to be outside in our beautiful trails there's rivers that go through campus as well we have about 1300 1400 undergraduate students we also have two to three hundred graduate students as well and we do have a very our very first phd program on campus so overall we have about 1600 students 100% of our students do receive financial aid and we award over $20 million in scholarships each year. So as we are working with our students coming in, we make sure that we are awarding them as much as possible. We like to do one on one financial aid talks with every student and their family, parents or guardians um, to make sure that we are awarding you every St. Martin specific scholarship, but then also can help connect you to those outside scholarship resources. For our application, we have a free application. You can apply on our website or on the Common App. We do not require test scores or, or an admissions essay for your application. The only exception to that is with our nursing program, you do need to apply and submit nursing essay questions. But for St. Martin's University, we have lots of different ways that you can be involved. We have lots of 40 plus clubs and organizations. We also have the uh, second most diverse campus for a private school in the state of Washington with 52% of our incoming class being um, diverse students and we're really proud to offer all sorts of opportunities for students through athletics. We are a D2 institution and we're part of the GNAC which is the Great Northwest Athletic Conference. So check us out and I'm always happy to answer any questions about St. Martin's. Thanks, Abby. And I'm Julie Nelson, the Regional Recruitment Director at Xavier University. That's a fancy way to say that while Xavier is in Cincinnati, Ohio, I am not. Uh, we get all our students from 48 of the 50 states. So darn you, Wyoming and North Dakota will get you yet. Um, but I am based in the suburbs of Chicago, which is one of our largest out of state markets. Um, so just a little bit about Xavier. We are one of the 27 Jesuit Catholic institutions. And as such, uh, certainly we are built on a liberal arts and sciences core, which you'll hear a lot about tonight. But the Jesuit philosophy really kind of colors everything we do on campus. And so to break it down, you know, to break 450 years of, of Jesuit tradition down into a digestible nugget tonight, I would say really, you know, the, the main philosophy behind the Jesuits is to be men and women for and with others. And I think that can be translated very easily into community. Um, as a medium-sized school, we're about 5,200 undergraduate students. And so students get to know each other. Our average class size is just about 20. And certainly when you've got that mix of people coming from all over the place, it really adds a lot to what you're doing in the classroom. But I think as you think about that statement for and with others, 
it really challenges our students or asks our students to take a, a, a look, the Jesuits would call it discerning, um, into themselves and say, what are my skills? What are my talents? What am I good at? And how can I use those to really make the world a better place? And so our students do all kinds of things, whether it's in the classroom or out. But remember that it's for and with. And so the with part is also kind of taking that deep look and saying, where am I not so strong? And if someone comes to me and says, hey, Julie, I wanna help you with this, that we need to be gracious and humble enough to accept that help and that companionship and that community. And so that's just a, a little bit about the kind of environment we have at Xavier. Uh, we are in the city of Cincinnati, but we are not in the middle of downtown. Cincinnati is a metro area of about two and a half million people. Um, so we are just about 10 minutes from downtown in an urban residential neighborhood. So you truly get that campus feel, but you have an amazing city to explore and to use as an extended classroom during your time at Xavier. We, um, here's a fun fact, Cincinnati actually has more Fortune 500 companies per capita than New York, Los Angeles, or Chicago. Uh, we have about 360 of the Fortune 500 companies represented, and seven of those Fortune 500 companies are headquartered right there in Cincinnati. So our students really have an amazing opportunity to start, not just, you know, oh, I got a job after college, but to really start into a career. We're probably best known for our College of Nursing, for our Williams College of Business. Um, the top, we have nine undergraduate majors in the Williams College, but I would say finance, marketing, accounting, and entrepreneurship generally tend to be the top four there. We have an amazing biomedical sciences major, which is our pre-med preparation. As you, and as you can see on the slide, last year, 86% of our students who applied to med school got in. The national average is just about 40%. So we do okay. Um, and then I would say we've got some great majors too, kind of a little more niche, Montessori education, musical theater, digital innovation in film and television. Our students made 14 short films last year. And then um, I would say also to sport marketing, sport management. I would be very remiss if I did not mention that we too are division one uh, in the NCAA. We compete in the Big East Conference. Um, we had three conference championships last year. Our men's swim team, our women's golf team, and our women's tennis team were all Big East champs. And of course, most people know Xavier Best for men's basketball. Really exciting. Uh, just yesterday, we had two of our players named to the to the all-conference team preseason. Uh, we were picked to finish third in the conference and 31st overall right now um, in the country from the from that first poll, because you know it's never too early to start talking about basketball. But we're not here to talk about basketball. We're here to talk about being undecided. So let's get started and really talk about is, as I mentioned, you know, a lot of Catholic schools are going to have that liberal arts and sciences curriculum as the backbone. So let's start there and talk about how that really can shape how you can choose a major as a student. So I'm covering what exactly is a liberal arts and sciences education. So liberal arts and sciences is a very large field that encompasses a variety of subjects from four main subjects being the humanities, the social sciences, the physical sciences, and the creative arts. This really creates a path to look at your education as a whole of, let's say, a pizza pie rather than just a slice of the pizza pie where you really um, go into a certain specific subject. This makes your education really broad and diverse, which allows you to be exposed to many new ideas and philosophies. It also prepares you with broad skills within creative thinking, critical thinking, the analytical thinking skills, problem solving, and effective communication. And as somebody that graduated in 2020 from college and was looking for about half a year for a job, I can tell you these are skills that an employer always looks for. There's always questions about if you can think creatively, if you can think on your feet, how you are at problem solving, and how you are at com communicating effectively with your team. So with that, um, I can then move on to then talk about what exactly the humanities, the social sciences fall under. So classes and subjects that fall under these in the humanities would be English literature, modern languages, as well as history and philosophy. The social sciences encompass anthropology, economics, 
geography, political science, as well as sociology. The creative arts cover the fine arts, such as art, um, like painting, sculpting, anything like that, theater, speech, as well as creative writing. And the physical sciences encompass chemistry, biology, physics, geology, and astronomy. So as you can see here, there's a broad array of different skills and knowledges that you can learn within the liberal arts and sciences. From this, um, a liberal arts and sciences is going to be a good fit for somebody that wants to be undeclared as they'll get exposure to many different classes under different genres. They'll have exposure to many different cultures, ideas, and philosophies. I was an English major in college at a liberal arts school. And I can tell you, I read about all these different cultures that I never would have thought of before. I ended up taking an ancient Egyptian religion course where we talked about what they actually believed in ancient times and really debunking the myths of the money, mummies, the different gods, and even how it can affect religions nowadays. And I can tell you, I would not have gotten that experience at anywhere else if I did not experience the liberal arts. You'll be able to take all of your general education courses that I know Abby will cover next before you can move into a specific program if you were to so choose. And all this exposure can lead a student to working to find the right fit for them in a certain specific major, or you can stay within the liberal arts to make yourself more marketable for any career path in the future. As somebody that was an English major at a liberal arts school, I can tell you I started out being a forensic science major, but since I went to a liberal arts school, I actually took all of my gen ed courses and I was still able to graduate within four years after changing my major my sophomore year of college. And with that, it also made me more marketable. At one point, I was actually interviewing to become an editor for the medical boards. And because I did some biology research as I had to take science courses, it actually made me more marketable to the team as they realized I would have to look up less information about biology versus somebody else. So these are definitely all ways that being undeclared can really help you if you wanna to go to a liberal arts school, especially liberal arts Catholic school. Right. So thank you, Amanda. And as Amanda started to talk, you, you were hearing the term core requirements. And I'm sure that's a term that you're starting to hear as you're looking at colleges. So we wanted to dive deeper into what, what are core requirements. So you might hear it in a couple of different ways as you're looking at institutions. So you might hear core requirements. You also might hear general, ed general education requirements or gen eds. These typically mean the same thing. It's just going to be the set of courses that um, a student is going to be required to take in order to meet graduation requirements in an institution. And that set of courses is going to be really all encompassing. With um, if you're taking any sort of like college level classes, just so that you are aware if you're in running start classes or college and the high school classes or AP or IB, all of those different things, many times, depending on the way that the course can transfer that might transfer into cover a core requirement. So thinking about that too, it doesn't necessarily mean that just because a college has a core requirement, that if you don't already have college credits, that you're still re retaking all these classes that you've already taken. With, um, the, with the core requirements too, again, it's gonna be general core courses. So your histories, your English, your math, your science, but then it also can be institution specific courses. So your intro to St. Martin's 101 type of course in, within those core requirements. So it really gets you diving deeper into the general types of courses that you can explore, but then also specific institution courses so that you get to learn more about the institution that you choose. You can jump to the next slide, please. Okay, so I've started to touch on this, but what types of courses are included in that course? So it's going to be all types of courses. So all different subject matter from religious studies to English to math to history to science. But it also gives you a really good range of opportunities to look at different topics. And sometimes that can mean even within your core requirements, you have you, you'll need to take an English class, for example, or a literary studies class. You within that core requirement, you still have choices of topics within that as well. So you have the opportunity to go towards your interests and things like that. You'll also have opportunities to look at different course levels. So not just looking at those 100 level courses as you're into college, but you can look at the two and 300, 400 level courses as part of, their core, oh, part of those core requirements. 
And it gives you the opportunity to hear from a lot of different professors from a lot of different subject areas where you get to see different teaching styles, see who you connect with, and, and get to experience a lot of different aspects of campus. Sometimes it also is your chance to say like, hey, I am not a music major, but I'm going to take a music class as part of my core requirement. This is my one chance to be in the music building, for example. So it also gives you that opportunity to see all sorts of different places on your campus. Next slide, please. So how does core help you decide on a major? Well, really, and Amanda mentioned this too, the biggest thing is finding your fit. Where do you feel like you fit? And I've heard students say this before. I did it with my own experience of, I walked into classrooms and I was like, okay, I really like this subject. I'm like maybe this isn't the right fit for me as I'm sitting and talking with my peers. And then I would walk into classes and be like, I never expected to like this subject so much, but I really feel connected with the people and that's really helping me connect with the material as well. So core classes are really gonna help you find that fit, which is gonna help you succeed as you're going through college. Looking at those classes that pique your interest, it also is exciting to see what classes you feel excited to, to learn more about or inspired to learn more about. And when sometimes you'll connect with a professor and they'll they'll talk with you and say, hey, have you considered majoring this subject area? You're doing really well. And, and it gives you that opportunity, again, to, to connect with more people around campus, but then also see where your best fit is going to be. So looking for through core to find your fit and, and decide on a major through that is a great opportunity. And I believe I will turn it over to Julie. Thanks, Abby. Um, so Amanda and Abby have given you some great opportunities or great ideas about how to really use the curriculum um, at whatever college you choose to help you choose that major. But I think what you need to keep in mind, particularly as you're considering Catholic higher education, is that we are all very mission driven. And in order to live out that mission, it's not just enough for us to say, you know, take some classes and see where things land and, you know, make sure that you, you find your place because you could do that anywhere. But the thing that makes being undeclared at a Catholic school special is that oftentimes uh, we will have whole teams of people not just, not obviously not to shake you out of bed, that would be a little odd, <laughs> but certainly to say, okay, let's dedicate some time to you. Let's dedicate some time to what you've learned already about yourself, the classes you've taken, the opportunities you've had, and let's figure out how to use those skills and talents and interests to, to do something with your life after you graduate from here. And so at Xavier, it's a little bit more uh, focused or a little bit more um, organized, but I wanted to use our model just to give you an idea of the kinds of people you'll find on campus. And as you're going through this college search and selection process, these are great follow-up questions. I think a lot of times when families start this process, the questions are pretty cut and dried, you know, how many students and do you have this major and all those kinds of things. But as you really delve into, you know, here are my top five schools, here are the places I'm applying to. These are the kinds of people and services that you want to make sure that your college might have. So certainly everywhere you go, you will have an academic advisor. And while, you know, some people might say, oh, I visited my academic advisor once so they could sign off on my schedule. These are people who really want to work with you to say, okay, let's put a schedule and a, and a curriculum together for you that best address, addresses your interest. So, you know, maybe you are gonna be a biology major, you're just interested in science, but that interest in science isn't just because you love test tubes and Bunsen burners, it's because you love people. So maybe, as you're you know, majoring in biology, you also pick up a second major in sociology, or perhaps you pick up a minor in gender and diversity studies. And maybe you're sitting there thinking, Julie, I didn't even know those things existed. That's why you go to your academic advisor, because in talking with you and in getting to know you, they're going to say, hey, have you ever thought about this? Have you ever considered, you know, because you need those core requirements in the social sciences, you could group these four or five together with that AP psych credit you already have, and now you have a minor in, you know, psychology or sociology. Those academic advisors are there 
obviously we want you to graduate on time. We want you to meet all the core requirements and major requirements that our schools offer, but they are also there to, to really make sure that you are getting the most out of the educational experience you, you, you've chosen. And so, you know, these are great people to even just bounce ideas off of. So go see your academic advisor more than once a semester, get to know them as humans, you know, certainly work with them as you go through. Um, we also incorporate a career coach into our what we call success team for our freshmen and we incorporate that even as 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 they are freshmen and sometimes undecided and they think this is the craziest thing I've ever heard why would you give me a career coach when I don't even know what I want to major in well because there's so much more to finding that career than just saying help me put together a resume and help me write this cover letter and show me how to set up a LinkedIn profile and I'm good to go there's a lot of soft skills and there's a lot of connections that can be made both on campus and off to help students get to know what's out there. And I will say this as somebody who's done admissions for a while, you know, it, it used to seem like if you didn't have that major in mind as you came up to the college fair table as a junior in high school, like, why are you even looking? You know, this isn't, it's not that anymore. Because I, I tell students a lot of times, you know, if you just think, okay, I'm good at math, so I guess I have to be an accountant, you're thinking too narrowly. There's a whole world of careers that use those computational skills that you that you have and maybe take for granted. And so by having that career coach at your at the ready, you know, whether that's dedicated to you or just really walking into the career services center at your school and saying, all right, I'm here. <laughs> you know, what can I do with this degree? Those folks are going to be able to open some doors for you that you didn't even know existed. So those career coaches can really be helpful as you go through. And another thing that the career coaches can do is find mentors for you. And I think as you're looking at, you know, okay, here's a career that I'm interested in. Here's a major that I might be interested in. Here's an industry that sounds interesting. Those mentors can really, again, give you some insight into the, the real world applications of, okay, I love my psychology class. What does that mean? You want to find those mentors on campus and off, again, to be one more person to help to guide your path as you go through um, this process, because you're not going to do it alone. You're not, you know, I, like I said, I'm from the Chicago area and we've, we've got a lovely saying here. I got a guy, right? Like, you know, somebody who knows somebody who knows somebody who can help to connect you to whatever it is you want to do next. And so that's what those mentors can do. So if nothing else, I always encourage students, use the resources on campus, walk into those offices and sometimes just saying, hi, I'm a freshman. Oh my gosh, the floodgate will open and you will be able to, to access things you didn't even know existed. What a lot of times will happen when you meet with those career coaches is you will have an opportunity um, to do some sort of major quiz or some sort of personal assessment. And so I would say, you know, if you are somebody who's really actively feeling like I need to have a title for what I want to study, if you just Google major quiz and a name of a school that you're interested in, Somewhere on that school's website will be a major quiz. And so we'll ask you to answer a bunch of questions. And at the end of those questions, we'll show you, here are five or six majors that might be a good fit for you with conveniently links to those programs on our websites so that you can delve into what it would mean to be a major there. Um, once you get to college, those career coaches and those academic advisors may say, Let's do some, just some inventories to see what kind of skills you do have. So one of those might be the Myers-Briggs type indicator, just to give you a little bit more insight into how you tick, um, both from a personal and a professional standpoint. One might be a strong interest, interest inventory, um, just again, to give you kind of, here's your wheelhouse. Here are the kinds of things where you can really succeed. And the last one is called focus two. This is one that usually students can take as many times as they want. There's, there's gonna be differences, you know, where Myers-Briggs kind of really looks at the innate you, you know, the, the focus two is kind of give you the, the snapshot of where you are that day. And that will give you a, some great indications of, you know, what kinds of 
skills do I have? How can I use those in a career? And how can I use those in a major? And maybe you are one of those people that are like, Julie, that's all fine and good, but I'd rather go backwards. I know what I want to do. I just don't know how to get there. Like, I don't even know if this is really a title, but we'll go. Um, there is a great site out there called learnhowtobecome.org where you can do some career research and find those jobs that sound interesting to you. PR professional, you know, marketing guru, actuary, whatever it might be, so that you can click on those, dig into those and find out, okay, if this is my end goal, how do I get there? What are those steps? And it will walk you backwards to find out how you can do that job that you want to do. And that's a, a huge part of it. So I'm gonna pass it on to Ryan and, and let him finish us out here. Thank you so much, Julie. Can you just uh, forward one last slide? Yeah. Thank you. It, is, it seems stuck to me though. Hold on. Go ahead and start talking and I will, um, right. I will, I will troubleshoot. Fun. Troubleshooting, love it. Always, always moving on the fly, but nevertheless, <laughs> Um, I want to talk a little bit about the value of real world experience. You know, um, when you attend a specifically Catholic institution, liberal arts Catholic institution, you have an opportunity to really dig in deep and, and try some new things on for size. Uh, one of those things is getting out in the real world. And to kind of bring basketball back in the conversation, Julie, because I can't help myself. Um, one of the things I always tell students when they get to campus is, I, I say, you know, there's four quarters or four periods in a basketball game, right? And there's four years of your, your undergraduate experience. I would never be able to tell my coach back in when I was a much younger spry man, being an athlete, uh, I'm going to wait till the fourth quarter to put some points on the board, you know? However, there are so many students every year, that's, that's exactly what they do. They come into an institution, they say, first year, I'm just going to, you know, uh, I'm going to wave to everybody and then acclimatize to uh, being on campus. Second year, they're like, I'm not ready. Maybe I'll do uh, this. And third year, they're like, I'll do a study abroad. And then all of a sudden, fourth year, students wake up and they say, oh, my gosh, I got to go see career development. Right. Don't fall into that trap, folks, because you can utilize and leverage some of the resources you have on campus that Julie was talking about, like career development, to help you explore your undecided, your undecided major. Right. And many institutions, specifically Catholic institutions, have great career development offices that want to and are happy to help freshmen along the way, okay? So let's just talk about the value of your real world experience. It's the foundation to your career. Uh, I oftentimes call it the building blocks, right? So the real world experience, obviously is a really great way to build your resume and CV. I think that's just automatic, right? People understand that they usually make that connection that, yeah, my internship or my field work will allow me to build my resume and CV. Perfect. Um, but folks, the value extends so much beyond what you're doing for your resume and CV. Because your resume and CV is just representing you, right? But you can bring so much more to the table. So let's talk a little bit about your value. So an opportunity that you have to get out into the workforce builds more value intrinsically with you as a potential hiree later on in the process, maybe for another internship or perhaps for a professional school, whether it be med school or law school, or maybe it's just an opportunity to, to move into another uh, career. Right. Um, so you're building value to yourself as you go into the workforce and you gather skill sets, you gather experience. Right. Thirdly, and this is that this is really where it gets most valuable. So here at Iona College and, and I, this is my third Catholic institution that I've worked at in my career. Um, most of my academic programs, actually, I should rescind. All of my academic programs require some sort of real world experience. There's some sort of observation, there's field work, there's internships. Everybody has to do something to graduate uh, here at Iona College. So it's fairly commonplace to do a singular uh, opportunity. But many of our students are doing multiple experiences. And let's dig into what value there is there, right? Here at Iona College and, and the other institutions to which I served, students were able to start interning as early as freshman year if they were so inclined. So it's a good question to ask if you go to a career development office. It's like, hey, can I get an internship freshman year? Some schools will say yes, some schools will say no. But either way, they're going to be they're going to have a conversation with you, which is the important piece. But as soon as you step foot into a workplace, you're going to start to ask better questions about what it is that you want in your life and your career, because the career process, folks, is dynamic. If I could use myself as, as an example to self-disclose for a second, I went to a Catholic school uh, a long time ago as an undergrad thinking I'd be the world's 
world's greatest accountant, right? I was like, I'm going to be a great accountant. I love numbers. It just, it made sense to me, right? I sat in like uh, my accounting classroom for a year, my freshman year of college. And I was like, this is horrible. I never want to do this for my, for, for, like, get me away, right? And I became a psych major, um, which is pretty much the complete opposite of accounting, right? I, I, I deal it in human emotions. And I sat in circles and talked about my feelings for the next few years. Um, I picked up a master's degree in, in counseling. And then my second master's is in analytics. I'm kind of going back to where I kind of started from. Career process is dynamic. And the reason why I talk about that story is, folks, when you step foot into uh, an office or an industry, you start asking better questions about what it is that you're really looking for. You can also start learning what you can actually do with your degree. Okay, so let's just take, for instance, for instance, a management degree from La Penta School of Business. Like, what could you do with a management degree? I don't know, like 3,000 things. There are so many things you could do with a management degree. How do you know what it is that you want to do aside from just managing, right? What, what do you do? You get into the workplace and you can start learning, wow, I can leverage my management degree to do project management, or I could be a creative director. Or I could do, you know, so many different things uh, with management in so many different industries. But you really wouldn't know that until you've seen it with your own eyes, until you have the opportunity to unpack what those individuals are doing in their daily activity, not, uh, not a fantasy that you have of what we actually do for a living. It also helps students and, and people understand where they actually want to work. So I'll give you a great example. I'm going to stick with the management piece. If you're looking to study management, you can graduate with a management degree. Maybe you can pick up an MBA and you can work at an industry uh, startup. And you're going to work every day in a pair of Chuck Taylors and a t-shirt. And you're, you're working in industry, in business, at a startup firm. And it's very like, you know, or Google, right? Like, you know, it's very, you know, there's, there's not a lot of traditional things moving around. It's not very conservative. Or you can find yourself working at a hedge fund where you're wearing gray, black, or navy every day with a double wins or not. Right. And, and it's the same degree, but you, you can apply it in so many different industries in so many different ways. How, do, how is it that you know where you want to work? Where do you fit in? Do you want to wear a suit and jacket every day? Great. Then you could do that in your career. Maybe you don't want to wear that. Maybe you want to work in someplace where you're on your feet and fast paced moving 12 hour days nonstop. I know it sounds exciting. You know, maybe it starts for you, but getting out into the field builds so much builds a different level of understanding to what you could do with your degree, or maybe what you could do in the future with your degree. So not just your first job, but like your sixth or seventh job, what does it really turn into? Another great benefit of getting out into the real world is familiarizing yourself with the hiring process, right? Like so many recent grads are just petrified of the hiring process. You know, once they figure out what they want to know, what they want to do, you know, um, they're scared. Even if they graduated with a degree and they're still really undecided with what they want to do with the rest of their life, they're petrified. They don't want to move because they're unfamiliar with the hiring process. If you get out there into the world and you start the hiring process, it's going to be a little bit less of a mystery to you, um, which is something that I, I certainly feel is, it builds some value to the, the real world experience, but also helps you kind of figure out what it is that you can do. And then finally, just to kind of, it, it's really echoing what, what Julie was talking about a few moments ago. Building your network, right? Um, I always say, you know, seek out a Sherpa. A Sherpa is somebody who's climbed up the mountain before. When you, when you get out into the real world, even as a, as a young freshman or a sophomore, and you're meeting with individuals, hi, I'm Ryan, and I don't know what I want to do with the rest of my life, you have an opportunity to sit down with people who more often than not want to help you on your way, wherever it might be going. When you build your network, you're going to make connections with people who, even outside of their own industry, might be able to help you determine what you want to do with your career or help you get interviews and, and career opportunities later on in life. Um, so, you know, there's so many valuable things that you can do and leverage with a real world experience, whether it be shadowing, uh, internships. I know nurses do clinic, clinical rotations, which tend to be exceptionally valuable as well. So, the, you know, when you get to a college campus, the best advice I can give you is to find a career development office or a career coach and introduce yourself. Because I promise you, it's a conversation that will have lasting effects on your career overall and help you build a better foundation. And with that, I'll turn it back over to Julie. Well, thank you. Thank you. And I think at this point, um, if any of our participants have questions or comments or anecdotes, anything they want to share from after hearing um, 
what we've had to say, please go ahead and drop those in the Q&A. And uh, like Stephanie said, I know this presentation has been recorded. So if you want to go back and take a look at it or click through any of the links, you certainly can do that. And I think at this time too, the four of us will put our contact information in the chat. Uh, so if you have anything that you'd like to ask us individually, you can do that uh, offline. So go ahead and do that and keep an eye on the Q&A. And if not, I will hand it back to Stephanie um, to wrap things up on behalf of the NCCAA and the JET and StriveScan. Fantastic. Let's give it maybe like two minutes. If you want to put any questions in, that way we have some time that our presenters can answer them. We'll give it two minutes um, to give it some time to type. Well, it appears we have stunned them into silence, Stephanie. So we will, we'll hand it back to you, my friend. <laughs> All right. I just have one closing screen for everyone. Okay. I haven't seen anything come through question-wise. So um, I guess that will bring um, the end of our time together this evening. I wanna thank everyone um, very, very much for joining us for this fantastic panel. Um, students, families, attendees, when you close this window, there will be a link to a very, very quick, I promise, five question survey. Um, and we would greatly appreciate any feedback that you are willing to share with us. We do encourage you to check back to the schedule and sign up for any additional sessions that you may be interested in. And just as a reminder, as Julie told you as well, you will be able to find this session's recording as well as, excuse me, as well as all other session recordings at strivescan.com slash NCCAA. Thank you so much. I hope everyone has a wonderful evening and I'm sure all the presenters would join with me in saying that we wish you the absolute best of luck in your college search. Have a good evening, everyone.